You're listening to Trademarks Made Easy. Trademarks Made Easy is the podcast focused on helping brand owners in the e-commerce space. With your host, Susie Hickson, the private label lawyer. But don't worry, you won't find too much legalese here. Hey there, and welcome back. I'm your host, Susie Hickson, also known as the Private Label Logger. Today, we're continuing our interview with Karen and Neil Gortzman of the Private Label University. This interview was so much fun, and we had a lot of laughs. We actually ended up breaking it into two parts. So today is part two, and if you didn't catch part one, make sure you go and grab it from last week. So it's so obvious to me that Karen and Neil love what they do. They just have so much enthusiasm and energy, and I'm confident that you're gonna feel the same thing. Like Gary Huang and Andy Hooper, who I've interviewed in the past, these two are also just an incredible wealth of information. So again, make sure you Grab some paper and a pen and go listen to part one if you haven't. And if you have, enjoy part two. And I will see you on the other side. Are you seeing more people move away from sourcing in China and kind of on along the same lines? Is there much sourcing in the U.S.? Like, what's the manufacturing status for the U.S.? And part of the reason I'm asking this question, I think, is because I'm just curious, if, you know, if this... And, and I know that we want to talk about this a little bit, you know, the China US trade war. I wonder if there's actually really any financial implications people are seeing. So they're thinking, well, maybe I will do some more local sourcing. I'm kind of curious as to what you're seeing along those lines. So I think the people not sourcing or afraid of sourcing in China are not going to be very successful in business because they're listening to media and all this stuff. But I, I feel bad for those companies because you're going to have a really tough time if you think that, you know, you want to stop doing trade with China because, and a lot of that is just rubbish, really. But here in the U.S., of course, there's still places that you can manufacture stuff in and you can, you know, still do business with, but there's few. That's the thing. It's very few. Mm -hmm. Do you want to comment on that? We yeah, talk and, about and it has to do with any product, no matter it, whether it be in Europe or Canada or Mexico, South America, it's going to come down to where your raw materials are from, where the best manufacturing capabilities are. They're not just in China. And people forget just because they see, you know, on the media uh, and YouTube that China, 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 get things made in China, get but there are many other places. And like you say, in the U.S., there are still manufacturing that's being done in the U.S. However, you have to look at the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone doesn't want to commit to buying 100 or 500 pieces and only wants to test 20 pieces, well, maybe it's better getting them done in America to get the product launched. And some of our clients, we actually recommend and work with them on just sourcing in the US and Canada and Europe because those products would just be better if they were sourced there. So, you know, we don't always say, oh, go to China and do it in China. Some products I don't recommend. We don't recommend. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's perceived value too. You know, if you can say this product is made in the UK or it's made in Brazil or, you know, someplace else other than China, sometimes the person, wow, you know, it's made in Italy, it's made in France. And, and if the cost is minimal to have those produced there, then why not look for other places? But I think, again, we've been bombarded with the idea where make it in China, it's so cheap. And of course, now the problem, and as we get into talking about trade wars, where people are saying, just get it made in these other countries uh, because it's so much less. But so there are barriers to that too. So let's talk about that because that is a huge topic mm -hmm. that, I mean, honestly, we could do an, another podcast with you know, about the trade wars, right? About, you know, China. Firstly, I just want to get it out there just so you know. A lot of what people are hearing, first of all, tariffs and all those words that, you know, Neil and I laugh because all of a sudden now there's sexy words that you would, you know, have dinner over, tariffs. 
Tariffs have been around. Tax is not a sexy word. <laughs> <laughs> tariffs have, Show me your tariffs. <laughs> <laughs> tariffs have been around literally since the beginning of trade. I mean, they have been. Like, do you want to talk a little bit about tariffs? Because I think a lot of what people are hearing are just is political, is, is politics. And they are being bombarded by the media. And then the media is creating this, this mindset about, um, about China and international business. And it's really, it's, it's all lies. <laughs> I mean, it yeah, really and, and we were actually, we were just, we were in New York and we met with, there was actually a, a, a group discussion. There was some marketers there saying, oh, you know, since Trump started, just started to implementing the idea of having tariffs. And I went, what? Tariffs have been around forever. Oh, no, no, no. It just started in the past year. I said, you know what? Tariffs have been around since people were trading products. Since it was going from territory to territory, there were tariffs set up for protection of those territories. And it's the same idea in the United States, in China, and Canada. It's set up to protect companies and continents. And the tariffs change every single day. Every day, so tariffs can change. It could be 100%, 200%, 300%, 2%, 25%, 30%. So all this political stuff that they're hearing, it's not, a, it's not new. I have products that are, I have many products that are duty free. People say, no, no, it's impossible duty free. You know, it, it, it's at 30%, it's at 25%. No, it's not. It's just they're getting the wrong information. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's been a big problem. And again, the media hyping up the idea where, oh, the tariff wars and the trade wars. You know what? We're not at war with China. We're not sending troops into China. It's and China's political. not sending troops here. It's all political. Yeah. Yeah. And the media loves the anything that creates drama. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. They just want more eyeballs. And you So know. we've been getting the whole comments now of, I got to get my products made somewhere else. So... I'm gonna, my Chinese company is now gonna set up in Vietnam, and then in Vietnam, I'm gonna have it imported in, or I'm gonna have my products sent over to, to Vietnam, and then I don't have to pay tariffs. Well, newsflash. <laughs> you can't do that. And the government in China knows. We've actually had clients who've been, who have brought products over, have tried that, they're now clients at the time weren't, who have done that, and were charged two tariffs, two duties. Mm -hmm. You just can't ship a product from another country to another country to avoid <laughs> tariffs, to avoid taxes. You can't do that. It's illegal. <laughs> so it, it, and the government, can't, you know, it, it's not like, oh, no one's going to find out if you do it this way. And if you keep it under here and under this value, everything that comes through borders is documented. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a good segue into not only is it documented with where it's coming from, but exactly where it's coming from. So the government documents what company it's coming from, what supplier it's coming from, who is the contact person, their phone number, their address, what you bought, how much you bought, who you when you bought it, with, where it's coming into, everything. And I know that a lot of people have heard that there's programs out there like Pangeva, some of the other programs, data, data, mine. data mine, that where you can access all this information, but just so you know, it is available to anyone. This is public information and it's free information, free information to see. So a lot of people now, marketers are now going in saying, hey, we have a program that can pull in all this information and you can see where your competitor is buying products, what suppliers they're buying it from, how much they brought in. But the thing is, you don't have to pay for that. That's open to the public. You can where just, is, that? is that a government website? Yes, through customs. Oh, the customs, okay. Yeah. So you can access this information. But the thing is, do you want your information available? We have actually created a program called Concealed, where, because Neil, like I said, works very closely with the government. And we have been able to, with our clients and those who want, be able to conceal their information, keep it visible and invisible, keep it invisible so that people cannot access, keep it private, so that people cannot access when they're going into sites to find out who your supplier is, how much you've brought in, what you've brought in. I mean, we've been, we've been doing this for, for years. I mean, you wouldn't be able to track any information of any of our clients or us because we have protected them and their brand and their information. So this is a service that we provide. We don't 
advertise it on our website. We don't do any of this, but this is a service that if anyone is interested in protecting so that other people, other companies or, or you know, people searching for you and what you're doing, then pr please reach out to us. You know, we have a Facebook page, Private Label University for the private labeler, and you can uh, join the group. And then private message us and we'd be more than happy to get on a call with you and help you protect your information so that people can't find out where you're importing pr products from if you're importing. And it's so important with, you know, everyone saying that there's so much competition, whether it be on Amazon or other online platforms, to guard, protect, and conceal your information so it's invisible to anyone else. So it goes even beyond, you know, protecting with a trademark or, or a patent. You now have to protect literally where your information and your, your, your source is coming from. And there are ways of doing that. And there are really simple, easy ways that, you know, we, we, we want to help people protect their, their rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And it seems like it would really give certain people a competitive advantage to kind of keep that information a little more closely held. Yeah. So anyone interested, message us and ask us about the program Concealed. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that sounds like a really cool program. So thank you so much for, for bringing that up. Let's talk a little bit about when you guys, let's talk about your China program. I've always been really fascinated about what you guys do there and about sourcing and product selection. It'd be really great to know just some practical tips for that. And if anyone is interested in working with you all, particularly on sourcing in China and going perhaps to the Canton Fair, I think it'd be really helpful for people to kind of know a little bit more about that. Would y'all speak about that for a few minutes? Firstly, it is, we go every year, have been going since the 80s. I want to try to go with you guys. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, you have to. It would be so amazing. We'll have such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff. But it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for someone either just starting and looking for products or people who are already have a business that are looking to add products to their business or already have a business with a private label brand and you're looking for, you know, additional suppliers or you're looking to add to the brand. It's a great place to go. And China, like I said earlier, I mean, people should not be discouraged. And I know a lot of, we get the question asked a lot, should we go to China? Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? That's really where a lot of the products are made. It's a, it's a trade show. That is, how big is that trade show? I mean, how many football fields was that? Like yeah, crazy. over seven football fields. It's, it's more it's than huge. that. I think it was 60 or something they said. I mean, it's, it's, it's the huge. biggest in the world. And it's like and a month long, right? Or isn't it? Uh, so it works in, in three different phases. And that's one of the biggest things. If you don't understand the phases and how it works, you're going to end up at the wrong phase. And we have seen so many people try to say, hey, come with us to China. We'll be teaching you how to, you know, work the fair or whatever it is at the Canton Fair. And then they send the people to the, wrong, the wrong phase. phase. Yeah. Like, really? So they don't <laughs> specify that. Plus, they don't actually go into the fair with you. We actually partner you up with a team member. So you are working the fair with our process. And that's why we have 100% success with our students at the fair. But it's so it's broken down into three phases. And depending on what phase you go to, what we do is we prep and teach you live and are with you through through the whole process of how to pick the perfect product how to do international business how to source everything but i have to say one of the other things that we have seen so the fair is twice a year and if you are an online seller okay it is highly recommended that you do not attend the fair in october it's really going to be a waste of your time the canton fair was was built and created for the retailer. Retail, it, when you get into retail stores, their projections for sales and private labeling products and developing products are on a totally different calendar than someone who's doing something like that online, like doing a business online, especially like an Amazon business. So I see a lot of people saying, hey, come to the October fair. We're going to teach you this, this, and this, and this. It's like, okay, really? Uh, good luck with that because what happens is in October, it's the end of October, you get back, it's November, you just miss the, the, the best season. You don't have a product because you can't private label in a week. It takes <laughs> a little bit of time and you miss that whole season. Then you get into holidays. Then you get into the Chinese holidays. Then yeah. you 
you set in, you're at the fair in April. Right. But <laughs> so, yeah, you might as well just be in April to go to the fair. Right. But it is worth it to go. And it's worth it to go with the right people. And I'm not suggesting like, oh, you have to come with us, but we are the only program out there that actually does it with you, even inside the fair, read the fine details. And that's where you need the help the most. I'm not going to go all the way to China, like look at, you know, what other people are, are teaching. You want to learn from top Amazon sellers? How is that helping you when you're in China? Learn that when you're in the U.S. You want to learn from, you know, people who've been to the fair once or twice or three times? Good luck with that, right? You want to make sure that you're learning from people who have done it a million times over and they're with you side by side holding your hand, not like, okay, go loose at the fair. That fair is huge and no one speaks English. They learn some Mandarin really quick. Before right, right. Or even companies that take them in groups and they all walk as one group looking at the how same clock. How do you get clock. any work like, done? How do you get any work? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. we're very specialized, but we're also very comfortable. I mean, we have a team. We do this. We've been doing this for decades. So for us, it's very comfortable and you're going to get this. I mean, we throw it on us, a challenge. And it's so important, like Karen says, understanding international business in China, doing business in China. Even we have a lot of uh, native people from Taiwan and from China who have come onto yeah. our event because they're starting a business and you say, well, you're Chinese, you live in China, just, you know, go and buy it and sell it. And it's not that easy, yeah. even interacting and communicating with the proper terminology and information to approach manufacturers and companies mm -hmm. uh, at the, especially the Canton fair is very different from just going to a local trade show in Las Vegas or, or and it's or, very specific to your product too, yes. right? And to the industry, every industry you have to deal with, in a very individual um, basis. Mm -hmm. So it's not as generic as people think. So you're dealing with not only cultural issues, you got business, like business specifics when you're dealing with Chinese, and then you have your industry specific considerations. Yeah. And then people ask me that I, I have conversations with clients sometimes about these, and, and I'm going to give a very big generalization, but I feel like, my clients who have selected products that are sort of a lifestyle product, like they love a specific sport. So they're going to private label products that kind of relate to that sport. They seem to me happier, right? Than people who just rain, kind of do it in a more, do the product selection in a more methodical way. Do you all have any insight into into product selection like that? Like, do you think it's better for people to have sort of a passion for their products? Or do you think they should take a more clinical approach to it? Well, the I, yoga, I, yoga, yeah, the yoga yeah I mean, yeah. I, I love firstly that you brought this up because again, going back to a lot of the noise on social media, find your product by jumping into this app program and see what everyone's selling, which is when you look at the numbers, aren't even real numbers. Don't even get me started with that. And you're looking at all these revenue numbers that aren't real. And I'm going to pick a product based on Best that. Seller. And I know nothing about this and this and this. And then people are picking products like that. I mean, honestly, that is business suicide. Suicide. Mm -hmm. So we don't recommend, listen, I mean, we're doing it since the beginning of the internet. There was so no <laughs> apps. There was, yeah, there was no extra features that I could go on to. Uh, you know, it was microfiche and... Uh, oh. <laughs> Trade catalogs. <laughs> Microfiche, now you're really... Right. So, I mean, we know Not products, there. right? We know products. But the thing is, it's like you don't have to rely or spend money on all these apps and how to pick the perfect product based on, you know, what statistics are saying. You do have to do some research. Don't get me wrong. You have to, you know, do the research and, and understanding, you know, the audience and all that stuff. But to pick a product based on uh, an app telling you that this is a bestseller on Amazon or it's a bestseller here, it's garbage. And honestly, it, it's suicide for your business if that's how you're developing a business. It's much deeper and much more passionate, I guess you'd say, in a sense. So yes, just like you had shared with one of your clients how they had gone to picking their product or business, absolutely. Not only are they going to be happier, they understand, they have knowledge that they can then bring in. It's not just about products when you're, when you're building your business, right? When we're working in our one-on-one -on -one clients, yes, it starts with the 
product. It starts with private labeling, but we're building a brand. And a lot of that comes in with marketing, understanding that, understanding your audience, you know, bringing in different types of products and resources to help build the product and brand line. You have to have that, that passion and that understanding and that relationship kind of like, you know, a marriage in a sense, you're kind of married to it in a sense. So you really understand it. it. You're going in with like, oh, this is a top selling product. I know nothing about like, you know, we had a a man working (laughs) who had picked a product in the female personal space. What do you know about it? Mm. Doesn't have kids that are girls, not married. What do you know about it? <laughs> like, whoa. You read a lot of magazines and saying, oh, this is what people but tell know, me. But, you but know, he was told that, that that was the hot product based on this. And it didn't last. I'm really glad that we brought this up because I think it's such a tangible thing. I, I'm really big on when people are doing their product selection. I think it's, I think it's personally important to not just look, the numbers are important, but they don't tell the whole story. And you made a good point, I think, about like building an entire business, right? Like you're building a brand. One thing I've also noticed with this is when we're doing brand name creation, trademark creation, or what if they've done it, it's so much easier for them to come up with that name because otherwise they're just kind of like picking a name out of, out of a hat, right? And when you do that, you can't create any type of emotional connection with your consumer. And that's obviously super important, in my opinion, to be able to create that emotional connection with the consumer. And you do that via your brand name and your overall, your overall branding. It's a lot harder when you have a guy selecting you know, female-oriented products to really be able to c- create that <laughs> emotional connection with the consumer. Mm-hmm. No, so. ab- absolutely. And that's the key. Are you looking for something to just find any product that you can get up online based on, you know, this one's selling really, really well and be short lived for, you know, a month or two months, and then you have nothing. And then you got to start over again. Or are you looking at building a sustainable brand and business? Mm -hmm. Because then that has to start from somewhere. You know, we talk about storytelling, right? We talk about what's your story, right? What's our story? I mean, I have a story. That's why I do what I do. Neil has a story. That's why he does what he do. I mean, if I just pick some random product, what is my story? That's the connection that needs to be made. And that's why when we do, when we help people pick their products, it's not about a quick marketing scheme or tool saying, hey, pick your product based on this. We're literally interviewing you. I mean, you have a product discovery session with us where we're sitting with you and helping and diving in with you to really make sure that the products that you're picking are the right ones. Like I said earlier, what might be right for me may not be right for you. Even though I'm selling millions of this, you get into your hands, you may sell nothing. That's the biggest challenge is that product selection. And if you don't know products and so, someone's teaching you that and they don't know products. And that's why, and, and, and that's why it, it's so important, as Karen mentioned, the product discovery. And as you had mentioned, really having a passion for that product, because, you know, if someone says, well, I really have no interest, no hobbies, no passion, nothing. But I took, I, you know, I signed up for this program and it said, just choose these because they're best selling ranks and it's popular on sale. You're not going to be behind the product. If I met someone who sold pet products, but doesn't have any pets, hates animals, doesn't, doesn't give back to animals. I'm going to say, well, why are you in that business? Well, someone told me I could make some money selling pet it's products. It's going to be very tough, You're going to, you're going to you know? see it. You're I mean, I use, it. I use the example of the poop. You know, we have St. Bernard's, right? And they make big poops. Yeah. And so, we go for one of the one of our things that we do every single day together is we um, every morning after working out we come together and we take the dogs um, on a walk for a mile and second they, workout the second workout and we take all three of them and we go and you know we pick up after our dogs and I every time I'm walking home we're walking home I'm holding this literally like two bags because they're they're two baggers and two baggers. <laughs> oh my, I am so passionate and in love with my dogs that I think I can sell their poop. 
I honestly think I could sell the food. And I know people <laughs> buy it. And, you know what I mean? Well, you so, need to figure like, out a, a brand. Like, if someone is so passionate and understands and really has and knows their products and their brand and, and there's a story and a history and a feel for it, you can really sell anything. And I think the consumer feels that. I yes. think they feel that through what you've done with your own branding, the copy on your website, the story Absolutely. that you tell. People can feel that. People know. Absolutely. And that's why when we teach, we don't teach you how to start an online business. We teach you the foundational stuff that needs to be built before you're going to take it anywhere and then help you get it there. But the foundational stuff, which involves not just product and private labeling, but copying, making sure you're trademarking. Copy. Yep. And using, you know, all, you know, protecting your brand and using all our resources to fill in the gaps to build a successful business. Because and, you, you don't want to limit it, as we always talk about, just to Amazon. Whether you take it to retailers, big or small, or trade shows, or other places where you can sell that product, whether it be wholesaling or distributing that product, you have to be behind that product and understand the product. And again, building a long-term business. Mm -hmm. Product discovery is key. And that's one of the things that we want to share with your group. We have an upcoming event, a live yes, event coming in September that, that I'm, I'm hoping that you are going to be sharing with our group <laughs> there, which is awesome. In September, September 26th to 29th, it's live. It's a very small setting. And the reason we do it small is because we want to make sure that you get Neil and I and that one-on-one -on -one attention. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on with our training, same thing with China, is that we prep you and get you prepared months in advance. Now with this live event is in September, we don't have months in advance, but we do have time before where we would like to share with your group this special offer of that if you do join us at a live event, we want to work with you before you actually attend the event. And we want to work with you one-on-one -on -one so that we can help you find your perfect product. Do a discovery, product discovery session with you and get you on the right track to finding the right products that are right for you. And you're going to leave the session, not just with a product, yeah. but with product ideas, many of them, so that when we come together in this live event, what we do is it's, there's no selling it's, and there's no speakers in the sense. It's just implementing Working with you guys. Yeah, we just give you the blueprint. You're going to leave with your blueprint, and together we're going to personalize so it for your <clears throat> business and then start implementing the process with you. And the best part is not only do we share, we share our amazing team with you, not only are we going to share you and you're going to be able to educate and share your knowledge, but we also share our logistics team. So we're going to give you your team because a lot of people don't have a team. I mean, it took us 35 years, you know, we've been vetting no our team. And so we're going to share that. So being at the live event, like I said, when we do our training, it's not like here's a piece, you got to buy something else. Here's a piece. It's everything. It's work. And it's You're going to get every tool and strategy and template and resource that you need in order to get your business going where you want it to go. And it starts with the product. So why wouldn't we help you find that perfect product? So will I make $10 million that weekend or the following weekend? Of course. And you only have to invest. <laughs> <laughs> So let's be real here, right? Any business, you gotta, be, you gotta be coming, be ready to work, right? Like you gotta, you gotta be yeah. bringing the laptop. You, you're, you're there to work for three days with you guys in Denver. Yeah, I mean, you can go over to our website, learn more about the the, the program. I'll do it. And we have a video there. You can see there's testimonials. You can talk to people. But the nice thing is you're just going to get everything. And you know, and we've, you know, we we have seen people try to do this. Um, other people try to do this and it's just different. I mean, it, we're not, you know, we've been to many, many events as well. It's not a selling event. It's not a speaker event. It's a workshop. It's work is the key word <laughs> in there. So we're going to be working with you, but you are going to be so prepared before you even come that we're going to just kind of jump right, right in right. and start working. Be ready to go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so what I will do is I will make sure that that information is provided in the show notes and a way to get a hold of you guys or to sign up for this and to be yeah. able to so right now we have a special going on there's an early bird special the price will be going up and because it's a small group i think there's only eight seats available okay. so right now, it's a little bit of a rush i guess <laughs>
available. But the nice thing is they'll get that lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention as well. They're going to get a time with us before the event, during the event, and after the event. And some of these specials that we have going on with our private time before and after the event are only for a limited time. But I promise to your group, as long as they tell me where they're coming from, that will always be open to them with this event. Yeah. So if you reach out to Karen and Neil, make sure you tell them that you listen to this on YouTube or via podcast. So yeah. you can and they can come into our private label uh, university for private labelers Facebook group. Okay. And um, just join and then, you know, introduce themselves or send us a message there just to let us know. So on Facebook, would they just search private label university and then it Yeah, they could do private label university or private label university for private labelers. And then it's a group. So we vet everyone in the group. So we don't get, you know, riff -raff. You're, you're going to get real people in there. <laughs> real people, hopefully no spam. We get, a, we get a lot of that these days. <laughs> we share a lot of stuff in there that we don't share anywhere else. So you'll get, you know, access to that stuff too. Awesome. Great. So is that the best way that people can find you guys through your That's website? Like, yeah, our website, Private okay. Label University, or through uh, Facebook. A lot of people use Facebook. We're also, you know, on Twitter and, and Pinterest. But Facebook, we have an, an actual stress. group where you can join and listen and learn and comment and ask questions and that's one of the things we love ask questions because what we love to do is we will actually send you a personal video that will answer your specific question and if it's something that can be answered right then and there um, we will we are the ones that are interacting and the ones that will answer the questions so you're going to be speaking directly to us I don't have other people monitoring it it's us you get us I might send you guys a question today all right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to thank you all so much for your time today to talk about private label and product selection. And I always say that brand name creation and product selection really go hand in hand, in, in my opinion, and should sort of be done <laughs> at the same time. Now, I have seen situations where people have come up with like, a really witty, like they've created some really fun, witty trademark and then later on found their products, but that's rare. That's really rare. Generally, when people come to me, they've, they've pretty much picked their products. And in the best case scenario, they're products that, they're products of passion, right? It's, it's somehow related to something they love. They love animals or they love a particular sport. And in those situations, when we're doing the brand name creation, it actually makes my job a whole lot easier because I know where their brand vision is. I know their passion and I know, I know their desired in, in consumer. I know their geographic, you know, like their target market so, or their demographics. So it makes it so much easier for me too when people are kind of doing the whole cre brand name creation and product selection. And then plus when people are, selecting products that our products are passionate about, they're not just like picking, like selecting some trademark, some, some name from the dictionary, <laughs> which obviously can be really challenging when you're trying to create that emotional connection with the consumer. Sometimes it just doesn't exist. So, but guys, thank you all so much again for being here. And I'm going to link to everything that we discussed in the show notes, whether or not you're listening to this on the podcast or reviewing it on YouTube, you'll be able to access that and take advantage of Karen and Neil's generosity with respect to all the guidance that they're wanting to offer you all prior to their program in September. And I'm just now thinking September seems so far off, but Tomorrow's August 1st. <laughs> it's true. I mean, that was when I just sent an email actually out to say, I know it's like the end of the summer. Now is the time you want to do well during the busiest season, which is literally yeah, yeah. coming up, right? So you've got to get <laughs> your act together now so that you can be ready and start making money during Q4. But I have to say, I want to thank you firstly for inviting us again. It was awesome. And, you know, we have one of the things that we really, really, really stress, especially as you had mentioned, you know, with brand and building a brand is to make sure you're protecting it. And that's why we work personally 
on a personal basis with you, but also share you and your knowledge with people. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we've, we've done a lot of projects together. We had a summit together. We've done other projects together. We have some upcoming stuff happening. Thank you. And we are just so fortunate and I'm blessed to have you part of Private Label University and supporting our clients as well and us. So we like to surround you. ourselves with brilliant people, hence working <laughs> with you is always a... So thank you. And it's a pleasure. You. I don't know about that, but thank you guys. That's so sweet. It's so kind. Thank, Thank you. you guys so much. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you loved listening to this episode as much as I loved creating it with Karen and Neil. I am so grateful to those two for their time and yours as well. So I will see you next time on the Trademarks Made Easy podcast. And remember, never stop learning. Thanks for listening to Trademarks Made Easy with Susie Hickson, the private label lawyer. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe anywhere you find podcasts or at theprivatelabellawyer.com. Remember, the information provided in the Trademarks Made Easy podcast should not be construed as legal advice. It's for informational and entertainment purposes only. It should not be considered a substitute for legal advice. Also, I'm not your attorney. You should engage with an attorney to discuss your specific legal issues. And finally, while I have taken precautions to ensure that the content of my podcast is current and accurate, errors can occur. And thankfully, like us, the laws are ever evolving.